Thank you very much, Luna, for your kind presentation. I am not a giant. I am a little man. <laughs> um, anyway, first of all, I have to thank Ursula for this. Ursula and the students, I understand, for the, this kind of invitation. I'm always happy to move around and to try to convince people on the <laughs> utility or the quality of, the, of this new field of investigation. I have, this is 12.45, so at uh, 1.15, please stop me. Often I can lose my control during the presentation. Echoacoustic, well, investigating and interpreting the heard voice. Okay, I start just to say that nature is rich of sounds of different origin. Human voice, airplanes, marine waves, wind, etc. So, nature has a lot of sound around. Some people call such sound noise. I prefer to use the term sound. Not song, sounds. Every location, habitat, territory, ecosystem, landscape, like this room, this room is a landscape. And in this room, there is a soundscape. There is a specific acoustic signature. In this moment is my voice, some minutes, some second before, the lunar voice. Your silence is an acoustic signature. And in this environment, we distinguish at least three main sources. Biophony is biophony, technophony, some, and geophony. And in this moment, we have no geophony here. But wind is geophony. So these three, three components are extremely important and has been considered important from Raquel Rachel Raquel Raquel is correct. Raquel Louise Carson. <laughs> she was the first to recognize that no birds, no sound, or no sounds, no birds. So, sound to denounce earth degradation. Very important. Absolutely important. Oops. Sound, uh, sound to celebrate the biodiversity. Bernie Krause is an example. Biodiversity and sound are extremely important. No biodiversity, no sounds. And sound to inspire art. Absolutely. The sound of nature to inspire artists like David Monacchi in Fragment of Extinction. But the biological sounds are used by animals like us to communicate. I communicate by using my voice, is a sound, my gesture, but no sound, my gesture is, is not enough. My gesture is a complementary to my sound. To communicate, to defending territories, to choosing Partners, and uh, <laughs> it's difficult to manipulate the mouse. Okay. No, sorry. Uh, have you by chance a mouse? I have my finger. Have some. I can, I can help. Okay. Thank you very much. Um. Because we are losing too much time to.
this is a wry neck. This voice means this is my territory, this is my home. Stay. And the second, sorry, thank you, Luna. I, I ask to stay here permanently. <laughs> Is a deer. Is a deer. The bearing of deer is say, I am the owner. I am, you know, I am, I am the best. Well, so the ecoacoustics, as you say, is a new field of research because we have to recognize the importance of the sound in the ecological processes. And the ecoacoustics is very complicated discipline, apparently, because it has different roots. Every holistic discipline has different roots. Landscape ecology, biosemiotics, bioacoustics, acoustic ecology. Unfortunately, acoustic ecology is from anthropologists. They used before than ecologists the term acoustic ecology, but are anthropologists. And they are investigating the role of sound in human, and we have to respect acoustic ecology. So we have to use ecoacoustic to find a niche, epistemological niche, to distinguish from the other typology of acoustics, psychoacoustics. And finally, soundscape ecology. This is a little different. Ecoacoustics is like an umbrella. And why? In which way we collect information from environmental sounds? We use the, the so-called passive acoustic recording. Passive. No, not uh, playback. Passive. In this way, we can collect richness or appreciate richness and diversity of the environment. Time in which a local extinction occurred, time of immigration for new animals. When migratory African migratory birds arrived in spring in spring time in along these parks, you immediately say, Oh, it's spring because you are heard a new a new a new a new sound, new songs. So, the tools that we have are really powerful tools. And we have recorders like this. This is a recorder produced by myself. As I, 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 I created the, 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 the not, not the hardware, I created the software. But now, with this recorder, the later I show you, the potentiality to record the, the, the voice from nature. But our instruments are very simple. We are using the spe spectrogram. So a mathematical representation of the sound, in which we have here the time, here are the frequencies, and here in the color the intensity. After the fast Fourier transformator, that is a mathematical approach that transforms a sound from the temporal domain to a frequency domain, subdividing the sound in frequencies. But of course, I have no time to enter in such details, but everywhere in the world, we have the three component of the sound, geophonies, biophony, and technophonies. There are no areas in the world in which technophony are not present. Airplanes are flying on the desolate or remote area everywhere. So the geophony and the biophonies are proxy of the environmental metabolism or of the environmental biodiversity more or less the same thing is like. Technophony are good indicator of human intrusion. The ecoacoustic approach <coughs> allow to investigate the acoustic performance of animals that change 
through modest modification of the atmosphere. The, uh, the biophony, for instance, have a very high plasticity, and so they are modified by the environment in which they are produced. Such methods produce a very low invasiveness. Invasiveness. We have automatic processing of acoustic data, and we have also real real time output of data if necessary. So these are some as aspect of this approach. But this is the part that I prefer of my speech because this is my 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 soul is I'm landscape ecologist, and I combine landscape with the soundscape the interaction between the two epistemological conceptualization of a holistic vision of the world, landscape, the human culture, the, the natural processes, plus the soundscape that is the, uh, the product of the interaction between biophonies and technophonies and geophonies. But, Indeed, soundscape is a better descriptor of complexity in landscape. It's simple. If you place four recorders at the four corners of this room, you have a different, different recording uh, um, effect. So this room, apparently uniform, from a, a sound from a point of view of the sound, is not uniform. So the sound has a finer resolution than a landscape. And for this reason that is so useful to describe inside a homogeneous landscape differences, differences. And I'm sorry, but I have to enter into details. We have a different ecoacoustic agent in, in a landscape, you have a different soundscapes. In every soundscape, you distinguish different sonotopes, like biotopes. The sonotopes are units. Inside each sonotope, you have sound tops that are the different repartition of the biophonies. You have sonotones, area of conflict or contact between different sonotones. And finally, you have acoustic communities that are very dynamic association of sounds produced by temporary aggregation of animals and uh, geophonic sources. At the, hand, uh, at the end of this story, you have the so-called ecoacoustic events. This is will be the last part of my of my of my speech. So in the world you have different species that create different acoustic signatures. Fishes, shrimps, frogs, bats, birds or entire communities like a Borneo cloud forest. These figures are simple a method for collecting information about the pattern that emerge from the sound activity. And finally, you can reproduce visually, we can have a visualization of our recordings. This is very important. This is the story of five months of continuous recording and this is from dawn to dusk in, day, in the daily time in Cinque Terre area in Liguria and these mountains are simple the results of the metrics used. This is a measure of acoustic information. And you have mountains 
along the town, the down time in the morning, the down course of birds. And you have high mountains, high peaks in July, in the middle of the day, that are the results of cicadas. Cicadas that are insects, that are singing so loudly, like in tropics, that create mountains, and like a, a helicopter that is passing through. So, this is just a representation of the transformation of sound in numbers and in statistics. Well, Moving into details and comparing to different environment like backyard in Michigan or a secondary forest always in Michigan, thanks to Stuart Gage, my good friend, that has offered such figures. In red is the acoustic signature of country yards, and in green the acoustic signature in the forest. Easily to, con to observe that red is lower and green is higher. That means exactly less birds, less insects, here than here. Very simple. And again, working, looking in details in the landscape, at the edge, and in the interior, you have a different acoustic signature because you have a different species in the interior or in the interior or at the edges. So different species, different acoustic signatures. And you can collect inform some inform information, you can say, I have more biodiversity, less biodiversity, according to different landscape structures. This is absolutely true and proved, not by myself, but by a core of many eco-acousticians around the world. Well, <clears throat> again, the same species, robin, the very common robin, common here, eh? the birds in Munich is like birds in Italy, eh? and they are not speaking German, are speaking in, in, in bird, bird speaking. Well, uh, they don't require English translation, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Munich robins have dialects. Yes, it's true, I am serious. There are dialects according to the regions, but this is another story. <laughs> uh, okay, you have more birds, more, more robins at the edge than in the interior. Our habitat preferences. So, if I collect information on such bird, I can judge if it's at the edge or is in the interior. But the sound is absolutely important to assess and monitoring the environment. This is a shizor, motor shizor. Uh, this is uh, maybe good, not good, maybe a disturbance, what's... So, sound is extremely, is a good indicator about the state of art of the environment. Well, moving, and we have used acoustic cues also to classify streams, tonola, at all in Switzerland have classified several mountain streams according to the stream voice. <laughs> it's nothing of uh, fantasy, it's not fantasy. According to the amount of water, uh, the regime of flow, the dimension of the gravels on the streams, you have a different sounds. Okay, physical sounds, but animals living in the streams recognize such sounds. And there are some interesting hypotheses about this talk. But moving in more in practical things, noise assessment, what is noise? Hey, noise is uh, involuntary, unwanted sound. Maybe noise for you, maybe a sound for me. 
uh, rock music is a noise for my generation no? <laughs> and uh, uh, music uh, are beautiful for the last generation so the noise assessment in marine system is fundamental you know that in marine system acoustic waves move five times faster than in terrestrial environment so the noise pollution of uh, sea <laughs> is very serious because affect the oops, the uh, affect the entire food chain of of marine of the marine systems in in urban areas, animals make different choices. Nest predators avoid urban area. In this way, other birds more tolerant to noise, urban noise, find new niche to breed, to reproduce, to stay. So we have changes according the, the composition of bird community in urban areas. And in very wild area, noise dramatically impact on the physiology of uh, large ungulate like elk or wapiti, etc. Wapiti. And this in human intrusion is really severe in many areas, like in Alaska, Great Mountains, etc. Also uh, in tropical, tropical areas. And sound can be used also to, as indicator of climate change. And we, we present just an example uh, offered by Bernie Krause. Uh, Bernie Krause is, uh, world, uh, is a world recordist, uh, first class recordist. And he recorded for several times in the same locality for instance, for 2002-2010 in the Sugarloaf, California country. Well, this is the acoustic signature, very rich. But the last year, this is re remain of this diversity, of this richness. No animals, few animals. And this may be a consequence of climate change, to dry for animals to stay in one in one, uh, in one area. Sound can be used also for crop assessment. Huh. Seems strange, but it's true. We can hear the activity of insects and larvae in the soil and predict when pest is, pro is sprouting from, 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 from the soil. We, we can use the sound to put new idea on biogeographical research because birds, specifically birds, have uh, occupy specific acoustic niches. They separate, they segregate each other in order to reduce the overlap. You know that singing requires energy. I'm speaking, it requires energy for myself. I can't speak for three weeks, a month. I have to speak one hour, two hours, and then I am exhausted. The same story for animals. They must speak really when they are sure to be heard, not to repeat. When you call it a, a telephone, how are you? Okay, bye, bye. Ciao, 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 ciao. You repeat, redundant, redundant. <laughs> mechanism to, to say, to be sure that the other uh, listen, has listened, that you are closing the conversation. The same story for animals, they try to reduce the, the abuse of energy, the abuse of, of energy. We have a, just an example. This bird, Leiotrix lutea, is a, an invading species, is a new immigrant. You have also in birds immigrants, not only eh? immigrants, not polemic, immigrants. Leiotis lutea is coming from 
Eastern Asia. Now is well, well established in Italy, in Spain, and many other Mediterranean areas. The problem is that this bird is living in flocks, is singing when the other species is, are silent, especially in summertime, and is dominant. When the black cap, our uh, sedentary species, is hearing these species, immediately stay silent. Very strange phenomenon, but this occurred. It occurred, and experimentally we have demonstrated with playbacks that Leotris lutea is singing and Silvia tricapilla black cap is silent. Is, uh, Silvia tricapilla is calling, is singing only in the interval between the performance of Leotrix lutea. And this has ecological implication, dramatic ecological implication. No time, no opportunity to interact with the other partners, with the, fem the females, for instance. It's like when our telephone is disturbed. We are disturbed, and the Leotrix lutea disturb the communication in black air. So, this is an example of implication in the biogeography of, of the species. Well, I finish with five minutes approximately, uh, show you, showing you a new idea about the ecoacoustic events. What is an ecoacoustic event? An ecoacoustic event is defined as an inclusive portion of soundscape at which it is recognized a distinct ecological role or meaning. It's, it seems a little complicated, but I simplify. Black cap, a car, and there are cicadas. Difficult to talk. To, to. These are cicadas. This is black cap, this is a car. All together. And now, this is an event. An event, a combination of different sources. It is possible to investigate the events is a revolution in the, in the story of, of bioacoustic and ecoacoustic because for the first time we are thinking in a holistic way. Well, we have uh, some software for investigating such phenomena. We have a logistic for this. We have metrics. But just I try to focus about the concept. This is extremely important for you because I understand that you are from different disciplines. So, is it possible to label an ecoacoustic event with a specific code? Yes. My code is composed by three digits. Every digit is the results of a metric. I have no time for, but in the discussion I can offer more details. So, bas basically, it's a very simple concept. Oh, sorry, eh? I, I switch and immediately something happened. Okay, we have first metric, I call ACHI IF. The second metric, ACHI IF, EVENIS. And the third metric, ACI T Evenis. No worry about the terminology. But in the first cases, you have few information, few acoustic information, narrow band. You have a very um, lonely phenomenon. <laughs> and you have a very short frequency phenomenon. The combination of the three metrics create the first code, one, 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 the minimum. In the second case, you have a lot of information, acoustic information, many information. You have a broad occupation of such information in the time, 
and you have a broad frequency occupation <coughs> along frequencies. My code is 867. These codes is not a fantasy, is the result of separate separate metrics that investigate separately, independently, the the the, 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 the soundscape. I can describe with three digit code complex patterns that occur in the nature. And these are the <laughs> <laughs> technology, it's cybernetic, it's not my best. This, this complicated figure is the distribution of the three metrics along, along the, the season and along the different classes from one to nine. You can see complicated figures. You can imagine that overlapping this free figure, you create an amazing number of potential codes. In the example that I put now, I present to you now, I have found 400, no, sorry, 300, uh, 356 codes on the 1000 potential code when you combine 0 to 9, 0 to 9, 0 to 9. Some codes are in, in not existent for, for ecological reasons, but nevertheless we have collected 300 codes. Now the problem is how you can identify 300 codes. Okay, one problem at a time. This is the ecoacoustic uh, space created by such type of approach. One metric, second metric, a color, the third metric. This is just a, one representation. These are, these are <laughs> birds. Okay, no, 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 non importa. <laughs> non importa. Ecco, questo maybe, this may be important. Strong rain, moderate rain, light rain, absolutely uh, expected, coincident with my expectation. Geophonic phenomena moving gradually. It is easy to code them, more difficult to code uh, biological phenomena. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, using four locations for one year of research, four recordings, for one year, one minute every five, every day 240 files. So you can imagine how, how many files you have one year. This is the distribution along the season for the four stations in the Mediterranean area, not far each other, but distinct, distinct for habitat point of view. You have a similar shape with a maximum in March, minimum in July, and October, November, a, a little increase uh, the lower, lowest level in December. This is more or less the trend for all the four stations using the ecoacoustic codes as guideline. If uh, I try to organize it, to, to create a similarity, a, a, a similarity coefficient between uh, the different locality, you can observe, difficult to, to, ride, uh, to, 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 to see at this distance anyway, you see that there are no coincidence between localities and distribution of ecological, ecoacoustic events in each area. It means that seasonally you have differences. Yes. But when I look for daily patterns, 
absolutely we have statistically homogeneity. This means that ecological events, ecoacoustic events, uh, have similar patterns during the day, uh, uh, independently by 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 the, the, the station. This is one of the final uh, figures. This is, are 100 events classified according to the occurrence during the day. Every group, every family has a different behavior during the day. This is extremely important from an ecological point of view. And uh, I have just a very few uh, three examples. Silent, the sound of a silence. Zero, zero, zero. Nothing. And you can see that uh, nothing occurs, especially in, at night time. This is uh, one, is the uh, uh, first hour after sunrise. All has been uh, uh, standardized and synchronized. So the silence is during night. They say, oh, it's uh, the co you have, you have, this is an important result? Yes. <laughs> From my point of view, yes. And this is the sound of a cricket. <coughs> and the sound of a cricket <coughs> is concentrated. In, at this time, at this time, in these two of the four areas. And this is the sound of a cicada. The cicada and I apologize, a, a few minutes more. Cicadas, this is uh, the, the spectrogram. This is where occur in month July, at what time of, of the day, and in, in, in which part of the, the four station, Anino in these cases. And this is the acoustic signature. Because the code 997 could be also rain code. But I have acoustic signature that can distinguish codes each other when you have not unique, unique, unique codes. And the last, this is the chorus, the down chorus. And it occurred in Carpaneta, in this area, from February to April, and one hour, two hours, three hours, hours after sunrise. Every code has been classified, is in a database, and you can reconstruct the story of each soundscape, what happened in such soundscape. So, this is my story, I interrupt here my, my narrative, and I thank for your attention, and I'm waiting for your questions. Thank you.